Over 30 years ago, my next guest started an advertising agency called Ogilvy & Mather. Today, it is one of the largest in the world, and he is considered one of the fathers of the industry. His latest book uh, is entitled Ogilvy on Advertising. Please welcome David Ogilvy. David, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, the, book, the book is very informative. Anybody interested in a career in advertising should, uh, should certainly uh, do themselves a favor and take a look at that thing, huh? Damn right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you've been responsible for some legendary ad campaigns. Do you want to start listing off a few of them for folks? Oh, there have been so many. I did good advertising for Rolls-Royce many years ago and for Hathaway Shirts, you know, the man with the patch on his eye. That was your idea to have a guy yeah. like that? Yeah, he, he was Mike Tan. And... Uh, what else? Hathaway shirts, uh, Schweppes, yeah. Commander Whitehead, you remember him selling Schweppes for 20 years, 30 years, and Dove toilet soap, you know that? Yeah. Well, I've done hundreds of them. I've probably done as much advertising as any living man. Well, at the time, what was going through your mind to think that a, a, a man with a, missing an eye would be a good way to sell well, dress I'd shirts? <laughs> I'd seen some research which showed that if you can inject into the ad an element of story appeal, you do well. People read the ad. They look at that. They say, who is this man in the night patch? That takes about a tenth of a second. Yeah. And they want their curiosity to speak. So then they go under the picture and read the copy, and that's how you sell the shirts. So building in a little fantasy with the product. Exactly so. It's easier said than done. Yeah. Uh, now, the, the classic Rolls-Royce campaign, w that was uh, print stuff, wasn't that it? That was, was all. It was a very small budget, and I had this headline, which got to be well known. At 60 miles an hour, the loudest noise in this new Rolls-Royce comes from the electric clock. Yeah. And I remember when I presented that to the client, they were all engineers at Rolls-Royce, electric clock, and the head man at Rolls-Royce, very serious, he said, it's, we really must do something about that damn clock. <laughs> <laughs> People yeah. bringing it into the shop all the time. But it doubled the sales of Rolls-Royce. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Um, what, also, the, uh, the Pepperidge Farm guy? Yeah, that was a big idea. To, I, it's the only advertising campaign I ever dreamed. I had to get an idea to sell Pepperidge Farm bread long ago, before you were born. And I couldn't get an idea. I just didn't have an idea. Awful. I was going to fail. And I went to bed and I went to sleep. Two o'clock in the morning, I had a dream. And I dreamed of an old baker driving along a, a lane with two white horses going to deliver Pepperidge Farm bread. And I woke up by sheer good luck, and I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah. The next morning, I went into the office. I made the commercial. And those two white horses are still delivering that bread That's right. 28 years later. So you, things that you came up with early in your career are still uh, mainstays of uh, modern advertising, aren't they? Well, of a lot of it. Yeah. That's the great thing. If you can't have an idea when you're awake, go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tell me about the first ad campaign that you launched. Do you oh, remember that one? Oh, that's terribly embarrassing. I was a callow kid, and I was advertising cooking stoves. And uh, I showed the famous Manet painting, Dejeuner Célèbre, where the naked model is having lunch in the Bois de Boulogne with three painters. And oh, here it is, right there. Uh, there it is. Isn't that awful? I don't mean it's awful because it's improper. It isn't. Manet didn't think so, and I don't think so. But what the hell did a nude girl have to do with a cooking stove? I know better now. <laughs> uh, but we all at, have to start. At the time, I guess you were just trying to get folks' attention, or...? I was playing the fool. Yeah. Now, but how... Uh, grew out of that. There are useful, there are good ways to use sex in advertising, I would guess, as well as not good ways to use Well, it depends it. what you're selling. If you're selling toilet soap, if you're selling bath oil, it's pretty hard not to show a girl in a bathtub. Yeah. Uh, I saw a commercial in Athens the other day, which uh, is a little bit sexy. It's selling pantyhose, and I think the sexiness in it is relevant. Would you like to see is it? Is that the one we have here? Yeah. Okay, all right, this would it's be... It's uh, Athens in Greece. All right. It's very difficult to do ad advertising in Athens because there aren't any copywriters. There are more prime ministers than copyrighters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a look at a... It's a pantyhose commercial, David? Yeah. Presently running in uh, Greece. Amanda, in a new castle. Μόνο με λοξήραφη στο σλιπάκι για να κάνει το πόδι συναρπαστικό από κάτω ως πάνω. Αμάντα. Δύσκολο να τα αντέξεις. Νέο καλσόν Αμάντα. Yeah. Now there's a... Uh... I don't know if you've seen it. There's one uh, that is advertising an orange drink. 
in this country that's just pretty much unbelievable. I haven't yeah. seen it. Along the same lines. Uh, what about celebrities in commercials? Is that well, a, good, a good way to go? Well, I used to use celebrities in commercials. I know better now because what happens is that, first of all, everybody knows the consumer's been bought. And that doesn't make them very credible. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they cost like hell. It's a waste of money. And third, and most serious, people remember the celebrity and forget the product. I don't do it now. I've got some better research. But I used to do it. Yeah. And uh, I did it once uh, notoriously, and I'm embarrassed by that, too. Oh, this is... You have an example of uh, yeah, a Yeah, I've got a celebrity, you... and uh, I don't suppose anybody here tonight remembers her because they're so young. Okay, do you want to... Mrs. Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt. The widow of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I got her to okay. make some commercials. This is a commercial with uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. What, uh, do you know the date on this? Oh, about a hundred years ago. I wonder if you realize that more than two-thirds of the people in the world are underfed. I certainly wish we could find more ways to use the tremendous capacity of our American farmers to produce vast quantities of food. I'm confident that America could lead the way in helping to feed the starving people of the world. I hope that more ways can be found to send them good, nutritious foods, like the new Good Luck Margarine. Years ago, most people never dreamed of eating margarine, but times have changed. Nowadays, you can get a margarine like the new Good Luck, which really tastes delicious. That's what I've spread on my toast. Good luck. I thoroughly enjoy it. The margarine Mrs. Roosevelt has just recommended is new good luck, the light margarine. <laughs> why, why did she do that? You know, I wrote that inane speech for her to make, but it didn't seem silly at the time. The times changed. Why did she do it? $35,000, that's why. Wow. And uh, I regret it. It was not my finest hour. Uh, my Republican friends how could, said, you, how could you use that woman? And my liberal friend said, dragging Mrs. Roosevelt through the gutter of Madison <laughs> Avenue. And I'm sorry, people remembered Mrs. Roosevelt, but they couldn't remember the name of the margarine. That was the mistake. Did you, uh, you oh, so it did, obviously didn't sell any margarine. No, didn't sell anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was devoted to that woman, wonderful you, woman. You also have had some experience, uh, aside from being an advertising man, as a, a chef? Yes, I started my life, uh, my career as a chef in Paris. Very rare, a Scotch chef in Paris, but that I was. And uh, that was hard work. I worked 63 hours a week. And I remember one day, uh, I was decorating frogs' legs. Very difficult. A frog has very small legs, and I had to get this beautiful decoration on its thigh. It wasn't cooking. <laughs> it was jewelry. It was Fabergé. And the head chef came over to watch me. And he watched me, and he signaled for all the other chefs, the 35, to come around. I thought, son of a going to farm and he wants an audience <laughs> and when they were all around I went on working my hands trembling my legs knocking together like castanets he pointed at my work and he said to the others that is the way to do it it was the proudest moment of my whole life until about two hours later when he took me up to the kitchen and opened to the dining room opened the door and pointed into the dining room there I saw the president of France oh. eating my dog's legs my frog's legs <laughs> 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 we gotta we'll come back here. We uh, we'll be right back with David Ogilvy. All right. So the president of France ate the frog legs, the and president of France ate my frog frog legs. I'm sorry to say, two weeks later he died. Yeah. <laughs> kind of an un, uh, unfortunate episode there, David. Thank you very much for being here. It was a real honor to meet you. Thank you, sir.